Hey everyone, welcome back to Staying Connected. This is Katie, your host, and today I have Lindley with me, and she's going to tell us her story with vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Hey. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for agreeing to talk to me about your story. Oh, you're welcome. I love to. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how are you diagnosed with vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? So when I was 19, I had a spontaneous lung collapse. And so I spent three days in the hospital. And um, about like a day or so later, they did a miscellaneous test. And I was confirmed for uh, vascular Ehlers Danlos. So what led them to do that test? Um, my dad had it. Um, and so I did show signs of it. I was born club-footed. I bruised really I bruised really easily and I can pop blood vessels by just stepping wrong or whatever. My mom didn't really want to test me since I was kind of a dancer and she didn't want to like know the answer. Um, but when my dad passed it was kind of um, let's see, you know, if she does, but we didn't really like get into it until the lung collapse. And how old are you now? I'm twenty one. What caused the lung collapse? We don't know. I did vape when I was a little bit younger. Um, I woke up. I was about to get ready for work. I couldn't catch my breath. I had like sternum pains for like a few days and I was like, oh, you know, maybe it's just bad heartburn. And I went to um, an access medical out here and they did a x-ray for pneumonia because I just I was coughing. I just I just sounded awful. And they, they come back into the room and they're like, we're going to get you an ambulance. Like, you got to go to the emergency room. Like, you're having a pneumothorax. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying. I'm not, no. So I called my mom. And I was like, will you come get me? I'm having this. And I handed her the phone. And uh, she was like, I'll be there in like 10 minutes. Don't get in the ambulance. And I was like, okay, I'll just like chill here. You know, what else can I do? <laughs> So my mom rushed me to the emergency room and she was like, she had like all my paperwork. She had my dad's paperwork and she um, was like, she's having a pneumothorax. So I got into the room, they did an x-ray and 90% of my lung was deflated. Wow. So how long was it <sighs> that you were having these symptoms before you went to the doctor for that? Two, three days I had chest pains and I didn't think anything of it. And they, <laughs> they're like, yeah, you're, you, you were using more than one lung in more than 12 hours or one lung for more than 12 hours. And I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> cool. Wow. So what did they do to fix that? So they put me on oxygen like right away. And um, then they did kind of like an emergency surgery. I remember I'm like, oh, my gosh, because I had strep bef like before my mom thought it was like bronchitis you know she didn't think anything of it mm -hmm. and so like I'm just standing there with my mom I was like I'm so sorry I didn't take my antibiotics <laughs> and she's like <laughs> she's like it's it's okay like this is not what <laughs> it's not it <laughs> like okay and I remember going in there and you know they had to take you know my shirt off and everything I'm just like chilling in there like with my shorts and my sandals on and I'm just like what are they going to do to me? Like, I don't remember them numbing me or anything. I remember this um, plastic kind of like cover and then they put this blue cover over me and I'm like turning to my left side because even though, you know, I have piercings and tattoos, like I don't like looking at stuff. So <laughs> this guy was like, then one of the guys, he was like, okay, you know, what's your name? And I told him and he was like, what do you do? And I was like, I'm a hairstylist. And he was like, oh yeah, where at? And I told him and he was like, oh my gosh, I drive by there every day. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I remember kind of like crying, like kind of tears and I was in and out of it. And then for almost a week I was in and out of it, but they put a chest tube in wow. and they turned it off less than 24 hours and then they did like another x-ray and I was having another one. So they had the machine on for like two, three, four-ish days. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what an experience. 
Oh, it was bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really don't like remember any. Like I remember some of, some of it. One of my really good friends, his dad and him made. I was craving chicken spaghetti. Like I could not eat hospital food anymore. Mm-hmm. I was like, just make me chicken spaghetti, and they brought me this big old tub of chicken spaghetti, and I <laughs> ate it for a week. Like, <laughs> does not get old. <laughs> oh man, I've never had chicken spaghetti. Like a pound of Velveeta, some chicken, oh tomatoes. Gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll send you the recipe. Okay. <laughs> um, so they were able to kind of clue in that you might have this because your dad had it, you said. Yes. So tell me more about him. So I was a daddy's girl. Like we did... Oh gosh, you'd take naps like every Saturday. You'd get mad if I would like get up. And he's like, no, we're taking a nap. And I'm like, oh, that's probably why I like naps so much now. <laughs> and uh, like some things, like we did a lot. You know, me, my mom, my brother, and my dad. Um, I never knew kind of like what was wrong. Like he would have like trouble. Like he had a really big um, scar going from like his chest like down to almost his hip area his appendix ruptured wow and I guess like he could dislocate his knees like getting up off the floor and he had um bleps on his lungs so if one of them would pop then um his lung would collapse so what are those so they're kind of I want to say like sores but I imagine like them just kind of like being like, oh gosh, I'm like like blisters or something. God, yeah, like oh, yeah, where it's just kind of like fluid and like yeah, something like that, like on the lungs and like if you know something happens, like or he you know coughs, then mm-hmm. just kind of uh, would collapse his lung and I guess he had like a hernia surgery and all this other stuff I didn't you know my mom like never told me until like when I was older mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah so what happened to him so he we went skating like my elementary school they had like the big skate nights and we would go well my dad he was getting on the rink and he fell And, um, he like left after that and my parents were kind of separated. So like I saw, saw him, you know, but I didn't, it was weird. I kind of remember that time, but I don't. And, um, after that, like we, I'm Czech. So, um, here we have like this big, like Czech festival every year. And we were there when my dad had his arm in a sling. And we were like, okay, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask him what happened. I was just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and he, um, we went over there, I think afterwards, and he started like coughing and like couldn't talk or anything. So my mom rushed to pick us up and um, he, I guess he went to the hospital. Well, then they transferred him to another one. And he was, he had a lung collapse and it was his left one. And, um, they put a chest tube in and they popped, I guess they went too far. They popped the sack around his heart. Um, they fixed it with emergency surgery. And then a few days later, he had an aneurysm. He went back into emergency surgery and they pierced his heart. Wow. How old was he? Do you know? He was 38. Wow. And how old were you? I was nine. So at what age? You didn't get confirmed then until you were 19. So for those 10 years, you weren't sure whether or not you had this? Yeah. um, I danced until I was 15, 16, until I had to get a job. (laughs) And I would pop blood vessels, like if I hit my leg wrong or, you know, if I stepped wrong, I'd pop, pop blood vessels, I bruise, I'll get random bruises. My mom, you know, was just like, just take vitamin C and everything. And I was like, okay, you know, ice the 
blood vessels. <laughs> I just everything lay down, take a nap. I didn't. Uh, I didn't really have like major issues in those like ten years. Like the most I it really was was I was born club footed, you know, multiple surgeries, multiple casts on both my feet. They told my parents that I wouldn't walk. And um that was just like the major stuff that I had and then bruising and blood vessels and then I got a MRSA infection. Uh sixteen area, I think, oh, or seventeen. That that was awful. She like popped it and it hurt. I was like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, when I was in school, you know, everyone was like, you know, go eat a cheeseburger, you know, gain weight or something. I do have the, you know, translucent skin. Mm-hmm. Like, you can see veins all over. And I just thought, you know, it was kind of normal because I don't really have fat. And um, I got mono when I was... 18, um, I started, like, getting kind of, like, sores in my mouth, and they, well, Thanksgiving, I was not feeling well at all, so went to, um, after-hour clinic, and they, I was running 101 temperature, but my flu came back negative, my strep came back negative, but they just sent me with antibiotics, and was like, oh, here you go, you should be start to feel good. Friday, I was running 104 temperature. Um, we went to just OU Med because we were, um, I lived in Guthrie at the time and it was like the closest one because it was snowing and icing. And um, they gave me a shot and was like, 104 temperature is not high for adults. And I was like, I'm barely 18. And the weekend, I, like, started to feel better, you know, kind of. I still had, like, a sore in my mouth. I was like, whatever. Monday came. I could not do it anymore. I was like, I got to go home because I had I was living with an ex at the time. And my, uh, my mom was like, just come home. We got to get you ready for your surgery, you know. And I'm like, oh, gosh, okay, another surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so I went home, you know. I was eating noodles with a little bit of broth. Like, I didn't really eat. I lost four pounds in two days. Oh. Yeah. I don't have much to lose. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went to my ENT. He up my um, antibiotic dosage and was like, this should help and everything. We're like, okay. Wednesday, I couldn't do it. My mom was having me drink my medicine from a medicine cup with a straw. You know, crush up the pill, put it in water, drink it from a straw. I couldn't do it. I was like, Mom, I can't. And she was like, okay, you know, I'll make another appointment, but this will probably, you know, I have to go to the hospital. And I was like, oh, gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but that. Yeah. So, um, they um, we got to the hospital ER, you know, they took me back. I was in the ER for probably like 10 hours. I was like dehydrated. Like I was just... I was not having it. It's like, just let me sleep and just give me some ice water. They, my flu came back negative. My strep came back negative. My mono came back negative. Everything came back negative. They're like, what is going on? We got to my room. My mom, um, she stayed with me the entire few days. And um, they told me I had mono because my white blood cells were high or low. Hmm. Low. So we were like, okay, and then they just sent me on my way with some steroids to get the sores out of my mouth, and now my mom gets really um, bad cold sores, so ever since I got mono, I get cold sores, so that's great. (laughs) (laughs) Never had cold sores until after that. Don't get mono. (laughs) The moral of the story, don't get mono. (laughs) Don't get mono. (laughs) Awful. Yeah, like... (laughs) <laughs> they had Salisbury steak on the menu, and that's what I wanted, and I could barely eat it. I was so upset because I wanted Salisbury steak. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Then just my lung collapse, and then had a couple of other stuff, but that's really it in the 10 years before finding out. 
So, how did you feel when you found out? Because it's only been a couple of years, right? Yeah. Um, relieved and not relieved. <laughs> <laughs> relieved that I know why I bruise easily and, you know, why I was born club-footed and why I have problems. Not relieved because, you know, I do research and, you know... I cut hair, I stand on my feet, it's probably, you know, not the best career choice, but I love what I do, and just, I do research, and it's just, some stuff, like, scares me, and being in the groups, it kind of, like, was like, it's okay, you know, we're all gonna get through this, there's, like, big group, because I'd never met anybody with VEDs or even at there's Danlos syndrome. I've never met anybody else. And so like being in the group and I've met one of the girls, um, she, I think she's just in the EDS group. She's mm-hmm. uh, my retina specialist, one of his techs. Oh, wow. So she has the high, I think she's the hypermobility, but they're like watching her for all of them. Her dad had it as well. She can, um, move her hand backwards and, like, grab, like, a water bottle or something. Huh. Like, Like, yeah. backwards? Yeah. I'm trying to envision what that would look like. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> 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 That's so interesting. It's what kind of, inter- um, what extent of hypermobility do you have? Um, I can pop my knees they kind of go backwards. I can put my thumb to my wrist. Mm-hmm. That's really it. You ain't got the fancy hypermobility stuff. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have that. <laughs> Just walk around. And <laughs> I'll have to send you the video. It is so cool to watch. Just watch. I'm just like, oh, now I can't do cool stuff like that. Just my thumbs. <laughs> And then, you know, I have some clients that are like, oh, yeah, I can do that, too. And I'm like, well, then I'm not special. (laughs) (laughs) Take away my shine. It's okay. (laughs) But, yeah, like like you said, you don't meet anybody with the vascular type. No, not at all. Like, the clients that I have, that some of them are nurses and doctors, they're like, I, you don't hear that every day. Or they're, like, looking at me. And, you know, they only learn. They, some people have told me they learn rare diseases for maybe two weeks, if that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, coming into the group and seeing so many people, I'm like, surely they should have, like, technology going on with this stuff. Yeah, it's a struggle. It is. And I've had, you know, after, like, I was diagnosed, I was like, okay, you know, just got to be careful. And then um, my I ruptured the main tendon in my foot. So they did tendon reconstructive surgery. And then six months later, my retina detached from my eye. Wow. What, so, is, that, what is that experience like? So... At Thanksgiving time, it's like the special kind of season for me I guess (laughs) (laughs) I was at work and you know I was kind of like in a boot but not really like from my foot surgery again and so I I wore my glasses like we were only open for a little bit on Thanksgiving Eve and I was like I kept feeling like I was looking through a fishbowl and like half of my eye was like a yellowish tone and then half was kind of regular and I was like I just need a new prescription I'm gonna make an appointment with a doctor you know I go in and he's like looking he's like I know he's like I know what your problem is and I'm like okay and he was like your retina is detached and I was just like what <laughs> and so <laughs> I don't know all these fancy terms I'm like yeah retina's in your eye like what so I guess there was like some scar tissue or something and it was still tearing Wow. I got to the retina specialist, and he was like, if you would have waited any longer, you would have lost all central vision in your eye. So I guess it was going on for more than a few months. Wow. So they 
I think like a week or so later, I got into surgery and he was like, I'm going to be honest, like, because he kind of knows about EDS and everything. And I'm so grateful that he does. And he was like, honestly, I don't, he's like, I don't know what surgery we're going to do. And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you like he was saying, um, I guess I had kind of blue around my eyes, so which like my tissues are kind of thin. He was like, if the buckle doesn't take um, to your eye, then we're going to have to do like this gas bubble, but you would have a 100% chance of cataract in that eye. And I was like, I don't want another eye surgery. I don't even want one to begin with. Yeah. So he, um, luckily, you know, we all prayed and we we're like, we're going to get the buckle, you know, everything's okay. I had to walk myself into, you know, the opera, the OR, I had to walk myself. I didn't get rolled in there. She was like, all right, let's go. And I was just like, I want to be rolled in there. But <laughs> the VIP service. <laughs> right? <rolled> <laughs> I get to, no, I get to walk in. You know? <laughs> so we, um, I got in there, you know, he's like, everything's going to be okay. And I remember like this tear just kind of came out of one eye and, I remember waking up and I thought, you know, eye surgery, I was going to be in pain. Like it just, I just could, I was scared. I was terrified. And, um, I just had, I looked like a pirate, you know, I had gauze and stuff around my eye. And so we went back the next day to get my bandages off and he's like, it looks really good. I guess it only kind of bled a little bit. My eye was really swollen. It just really looked like I had a giant case of pink eye. <laughs> so I do have a buckle around my eye it's pretty pretty cool like if I like look down I can like feel the little thing and people just like look at me and I'm like it's cool but <laughs> <laughs> I see but if I take my contacts or my glasses off I am like totally almost like everything's blurry in my right eye so I'm more like I ha I'm nearsighted I'm farsighted and I have astigmatism in both eyes wow yeah so now my right eye is like two times bigger than my left eye kind of like it's just kind of like the book kind of like squishes it a little bit huh. like, you can't tell the difference like looking at me but yeah. um I did the buckle everything is fine and everything's healed knock on knock on yeah. wood I haven't <laughs> I haven't had really anything except, you know, I have arthritis in the foot that I had surgery on, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> Just I need arthritis a... in my knee, too, from surgery. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Do you snap crack up? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's great. <laughs> so, yep. My boyfriend calls it the zombie walk, like when I like walk from the bedroom and everything like I feel kind of you know cramps up my knee like I'm just it's like it just takes me a minute to wake up <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. what other things does having this diagnosis change for you oh goodness sometimes you know I'm thinking like it, you know am I gonna get to do this stuff like I've wanted to do you know like start a family and all that fun stuff, travel the world, maybe not the world, but some of the world. Mm -hmm. um, now I kind of just like live one day at a time and just, you know, not push my limits. Um, it kind of, you know, scares me to see, you know, because we have the one that's, you know, most severe. It scares me sometimes, you know, because anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, you know, I've already had my um, life thing at 20, so I'm fine, you know. Should be fine for another 20 years. No no more stuff falling apart. Unless I get a robot eye and a robot foot. That's all I'm wanting. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, being like young, I feel like I don't have it so, as severe as my dad did because I would, you know, I could dislocate stuff and everything. I haven't yet, but I feel like I'm in kind of better shape mm -hmm. and taking better care of myself than, you know, nothing. It's not going to stop me. 
from, you know, doing what I love, doing, you know, fun things, you know. Yeah. That's good. It's just, just another kind of bump in the road, I guess. Is there anything else that you want to share with everybody? No. I think I'm good. I just don't let it stop you. I think it might just be a bump in the road. But everything happens for a reason. So, and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All that's, the time. <laughs> that's just a good way to look at it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. This was Staying Connected. This is a podcast where I talk to people who are diagnosed with vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome about their stories. Um, if you want to listen to more episodes, they come out on the last Sunday of every month. And I will put a link to the episodes in this podcast description. So stay tuned for more episodes and I'll talk to you soon.